Welcome all to Read HR's Industry Insights discussion. Thank you for joining us. Today we're talking about gender equality. So I want to get straight into it. And Linda, I'd like to ask you, what does gender equality look like to you? Uh, it's a broader definition of what we expect from people in the workplace. And whether it's masculine or feminine, that we can reward both of those characteristics equally. And it doesn't matter whether you're a man or a woman uh, in demonstrating those. An emotive topic or conversation point, but do you think we're heading in the right direction? I think there is a lot of momentum being built at the same time. We are in a, in a world where we kind of celebrate certain ideals around leadership that perhaps are dissuading as many women as ever we have done from, from progressing into those kinds of positions. And would you say that's linked around stereotypes? I mean, Andy, you've had a lot of experience at a senior level in HR. Do you think stereotypes are a big problem with women getting into leadership or even wanting to be into a leadership role? I think it is. I think it is, it is a big issue for, for, for a number of reasons, particularly around, uh, uh, I'm going to call it kind of the closed club mentality. It's predominantly male-led and that approach around those male-led leadership teams makes it very, very difficult for women to break into it. And it's predominantly driven by the behaviours and the culture that is created in those leadership rooms and in those boardrooms. Absolutely. So Jodie, you've been a very sort of successful woman in a leadership role and you've raised a family. How have you managed to make a success out of both? Part of it is right time, right place. Um, making it known to the organisation, that's what you want, that's what somebody told me a long time ago and I was lucky enough to make that clear to somebody quite senior in the organisation. You know, I probably do more in the time that I have right now in both sides of my life. I'm more efficient, um, it's probably fair to say. It's a classic stereotype but it's a horribly incorrect one that all women in senior leadership roles have to be these hard-nosed mm. characters. Um, and we wouldn't expect that of men, so it's just, it's just not right fundamentally. But also, they don't want to be a statistic on a key performance indicator. Definitely not. And, and I think that's some of the challenges as well. When you ask Linda the question, is it working or not? I, th I think, yes, it is very much in terms of putting out there the issues that need to be talked about. But no, because it's shifting towards to be a number on a KPI sheet. So a lot of companies are going out there and putting it out that they want to have 50-50 men and women at a leadership level by X date. Now, the question is, A, is that enough? But B, how can you actually affect that at a real grassroots level? I used to be, uh, from very early on in my career, very much about it should be on merit and uh, you know, we should be promoting people who are right for the job. And I've changed my view about this because uh, somebody would point it out to me that people don't get into senior positions necessarily entirely on merit. Their potential, their network, uh, their ambition, who they know, these are the kinds of things that often help people get into senior positions. The fact that they put their hand up. Yeah. A lot of the time when you get promoted, you haven't really got a clue what you're doing for the first six months. You have to figure it out and you learn a lot from doing that. So we're not talking really about going for, it has to be the right person for the job. It's a number of things, isn't it? Yeah. And you have to have people in the organisation to almost encourage those people to apply. If there's a vacancy, you know, are people reaching out to a wide range of people and saying, have you thought about this? So that's a really interesting point about what women can do now and what companies can do now to try and make that initial change. I feel like it's a very much a grassroots issue here. What kind of things do we think we could be doing at sort of school and even recruitment level to be trying to change this so that we don't end up in the same place in 20, 30 years time? Uh, there's a lot that organisations are already doing, talking to schools, sponsoring things in universities. I think the apprenticeship levy offers an opportunity to uh, fund uh, education for women, probably in subjects that maybe they have been dissuaded from or wouldn't necessarily naturally choose. So sort of engineering, technology, yeah. those kind of things. I mean, you're an organisation, you've got the apprenticeship level, levy, you can pay for somebody to have their education and they can have a job and not have all their student debt. I think that would be a very attractive proposition yeah, for a lot of people. Yeah. And whose responsibility is it to do that? Everyone within the business, uh, I would Everyone probably, in the world, probably I mean. yeah, exactly. <laughs> in terms of from those bits, I think HR play a really key part in that. I don't think it's just down to what are the tasks that need to be done. I think it's a strong influence around the leadership table and the board tables to invest. Uh, certainly, if you're going to look at early career, working with schools, universities to influence young people's thoughts and views about what career path they want to take takes time, it takes money. For me, it starts with HR. 
I was talking to a colleague the other day about on International Women's Day, actually, and uh, she used a fantastic phrase that I really like, that it's a business issue, not a women's issue. Correct. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I agree. There's a horrible stat out there that only 24% of senior roles are taken up by, by women. This is something that's going to take a long time to change, but what are some advice you could give to women themselves on how they can go about changing that? A horrible but completely unsurprising statistic. Yes. I think probably we would... I would agree. Uh, Unfortunately, uh, yeah. yes. And in a lot of organisations, it's even less than that. If you like the job, if you think it would be interesting, uh, go and put your hand up for it, even if you don't have the first idea about how you're going to do it yet, because you'll figure that out. Women tend to be less close to... Uh, kind of senior leaders within the organisation. So go and find people who can help you. Those are two things that women can very easily do uh, that will start to make a change and start to see changes for other women. Uh, where I've seen uh, programmes have been successful is where, is where somebody has found themselves a good sponsor, a good mentor that is prepared to invest their time uh, to help support, develop and promote uh, the skills and capabilities around those leadership tables with it. So, so proactive trying to find somebody to yeah, champion yeah. you in the business. Correct. Oh, yeah. And Jodie, what would you say? You've, you've been there and done this, so what would your recommendation be? I would just say have the confidence to understand who you are as a person. You need to really believe and, and be consistent with who you are. You don't have to be a certain type of way or a certain type of persona you know, to go into a different or a new or a higher role. Find you and, and be confident in who you are. So that's what women can do to try and help themselves. But what should companies be doing? I think first off, if recognise the fact that they have a problem yes. and actually put things in place to be able to, to, to address those issues around it. And secondly, I think it, it, it's look at it from an from a internal perspective. And it's very much that it's not just one person or one department's responsibility to do that. It's a broader issue, especially around the leadership table. I think they need to talk about it. Yeah. There needs to be more communication. I'm all for honesty and holding their hands up. You know, that gender pay gap might be because they don't have any more people in senior leadership positions. So acknowledge that and say that we'll work towards changing it. Nobody's expecting anything overnight to happen. One last stat I'd like to share with you before we wrap this up. If the gender pay gap continues closing at the rate it's closing at, at the moment, we wouldn't see it hit 0% until 2117. I think, and I'd, I'd assume you'd agree with me, that shows that we're not moving anywhere near fast enough. So on a pay scale point of view, so just purely looking at the income, what are companies doing wrong and what's leading to this big gap? Uh, yeah, it makes me so sad to think that our daughters, daughters, daughters are still going to have this issue if we don't pick up momentum on it. Absolutely. Um, there's equal pay for equal work. You know, that should be relatively simple to sort out. Then you have uh, the question around uh, seniority of women within organisations. That is something that uh, organisations can do something about. It's going to take a little bit longer, but you can do something about that. Then we have the, the point around what are so-called men's roles and women's roles. And women's roles and women's work tends to get valued less uh, than uh, things that... Uh, typically men are attracted to doing and that is a much bigger societal issue uh, but organizations I think can have a very real impact on that by by showing us the way absolutely well it's been fantastic to talk to you we could probably talk about this subject for hours it's a fascinating subject but thank you very much for your time this was a, a extremely interesting industry insights for us and uh, I look forward to, to speaking to you again soon thank you very much